So a lot of you may remember this Hoover Wind Tunnel Supreme that I have in my collection. I've featured it in in three vacuum videos. And this one I'm going to do as a repair video. A lot of you may remember when I run this thing or when it's running, it just sounds noisy and doesn't sound very clean. Listen. <laughs> wind down sound doesn't sound very healthy at all. Turns out I'm really convinced that the motor bearings are slowly on their way out so what I'm gonna do now is take the motor out and oil the bearings to see if that fixes the problem and I'm gonna go over a little tutorial on how to take the vacuum apart to get to the motor so stick around. All right, now the way you're going to want to do this, and I just got out my trusty tool set, is you're going to want to recline the vacuum back until it lays flat on the ground, flip it over until you get to the underside, and there's the brand new brush roll I got. It's a Cleveland Wood Products brush roll. The original brush roll on this did, well, before I found out, before I threw it out, the that one was actually serviceable. I just thought the bristles were kind of worn down, so I thought I wouldn't get to get too much more life out of it. So I figured I'd go ahead and update this to the Cleveland Wood products. In fact, this is actually the same brush roll company that makes the brush rolls for Kirby's, which is what really turned me on to this. So you're going to want to remove these screws to the bottom plate. I'm sorry I'm not showing you some of the footage on camera. It's just hard for me to look through the camera and do this at the same time. All right. Now, to, for the last screw. Here. And you can pull your bottom plate off. Which, by the way, could use a good cleaning. Then you just pull your brush roll out. Get away from the belt. And uh, just remove your belt from the shaft, which I'm not too sure if I need to be a replacement. This is a fairly new belt. It hadn't been getting that much hours on it because all it was was just sitting there while I had my other vacuums in use. And you're also going to remove this piece of plastic right here. This is for you. For the channels for the wind tunnel technology. The next thing you're going to want to do is remove one screw down there and then another screw right over there which removes the the screws to, to your hood. Now you're going to have to put this up and it's going to be very hard to do this part one-handed. So Get your screw down in there. Okay, you guys kind of get the idea. The wheels keep popping off. Get the screw out of here. Now you're gonna to want to keep your screws separated so you don't mess them up. So these are the ones to the to the bottom plate, and these are gonna be for the hood. And then there, then take the other screw off right here. All right. And as soon as you turn the vacuum over, the whole hood pops right up, and there you go. Now, to get, and you also are going to want to remove the the piece from the hose. This will give us kind of a better position to get us into the 
housing for the motor. You're also going to have to remove this top piece as well. On some lower end wind tunnels, you're not going to have to deal with this top piece. Like my tempo right over there only has the piece on the bottom. And you're going to want to unhook your hose here to get that funnel out of the way. All right, now once it's back on its front side and you got that whole tube removed, once again, you're going to want to keep your screws together. I like to keep them with certain parts. Do four screws to the bottom plate. I kept them with the bottom plate. The two on the hood, I left them with the hood. And the two screws for the wand, I decided to put them in the, what the heck, the wind tunnel channel piece. So at least I know where those are. Now, you're also going to want to remove these two screws that hold in where the motor sits. Now once that's out, I'm going to set that right in there and the screws are in there so they're not lost. And you're going to have to work this out, well, oh, oh you're also going to have to remove the screws on this, on this side too. gonna be kind of tough to get this out so let me go ahead and cut away real quick all right so I got the piece out so you're gonna want to keep these separated or at least I like to keep them so I know that one's for the left and one's for the right got the, all their screws in now you're gonna want to lift up on the side of the machine and work the vacuum off the head and that's off to the side, and now you're down to this. All right, now that I've got the vacuum down to this point, right here. Now, I'm sorry I didn't show the footage of actually getting it to this point, but what you're gonna do next is remove the headlight lens, which I've got right here, and there are the two screws to hold it in place. I did take out the headlight because it was built up with dust and I thought it wasn't gonna last much long and so I am gonna have to get a, a replacement headlight for that and what you're also gonna want to do is remove five screws there are two up top right here by the embedded dirt finder and three down here one there one there and one there see I got the three right there and the two up top so I don't mix the mix them and then you get the casing off now this is the tricky part is you have three wires down here that you're gonna have to disconnect to get out the motor and you see on the motor here there's the terminals one there one over there and one down here so But unfortunately, I am having a bit of change in plans. Well, what was originally thought to be a simple oil bearing project is turning out to be a little bit more of a challenge because you have to take off the screw, the nut down here to take the fan off. And I'm not too sure if this casing is designed to come off. And the. The motor, uh, well, the field windings and everything look look okay, and the, the armature does look good, but 
the there is some surface rust on the outside of the the fan chamber housing which what real this is what really actually amazed me as you can see all the vacuum is entirely made of plastic all the parts but when you get to the motor it actually has a metal fan which really surprised me but anyway since there's a little bit of rust out there and I'm having difficulty getting to the bearings I am having a change in plan and deciding to replace the entire motor because heck in fact actually the dust seal right here is was already warped when I got it out so figured that wasn't gonna last much longer and I already was playing around with it trying to see if I can get the bearing get it free from the bearings but to no avail so I'm just gonna go ahead and get a motor hopefully I'll be able to find one cheap on eBay and hopefully that one that has the same design because I'm I mean I'm fine with getting a TTI based motor if there's nothing else available but hopefully with with luck I should find a Maytag motor well my luck finally has arrived I found the, a replacement motor it was actually a used motor that was out of another wind tunnel or tempo or anything in the wind tunnel series that is an exact match here's the original motor like that so now this is definitely a Maytag motor and I didn't have to get a replacement TTI motor so that was double lucky and the good thing is I found this on eBay for only 20 bucks so I'm gonna go ahead and put this in and give it a test run all right now it's gonna be t quite tricky to get the motor in because you also have a new seal that goes around the the fan housing to create a good seal for for, for suction. Now you're gonna want to line this up in here, but make sure that make sure you get the top part where the two the two prongs. Make sure the two prongs here are pointed towards the top. So you just line it up and slide it down in there. Oops. But you gotta make sure that the seal goes in there too. The tricky part is you have to connect your wires up. In the process, I'm gonna get the lower wire hooked up first because it's gonna be hardest to get to when it's down in there. Alright, that's plugged in. Try and get the other oh, there's another wire right here. Now there's gonna be a long wire right here that runs around to the to the front prong. Sometimes you're gonna to wanna to rope Sometimes you're gonna to wanna to rotate the motor around while you're doing this. There's the front prong. Let me go ahead and see if I can't get the back prong on. I just make sure everything's all straight. But you also do want to make sure your connections are nice and tight. I'm sure the bottom one is too. Alright. Now let's go ahead and put the motor casing back on. Just slide these two screws down in their in their proper slots, and then take your screwdriver to tighten them down. All right.
right, now let's all put back together. Okay, now the next thing I'm doing is I'm gonna plug the vacuum in and turn it on to see if I've hooked everything up right. Well, everything seems to work fine. Now I'll go ahead and button everything back together and show you it running. All right, now that everything's put back together, everything in place, put a new belt and a new bag in it, new filters and everything. And this thing's now ready to rock and roll. So, let's give it a test run. Now, I would like to point out, because I'm, I'm replacing the headlight, I am still waiting on, on the light the light bulbs to ship in so unfortunately they're not here right now so it's not gonna have a headlight for this demonstration so let's run it wind-down sound anymore. So I hope you've enjoyed this motor replacement video of the Hoover wind tunnel. Stay tuned, don't forget to like, rate, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.